So derivatives can also help us with applications of distance, velocity, and acceleration. So if we consider the following graph here, this shows the position of a particle versus time. So position is s. Let's call this s here. Usually that's the variable to represent position and then t for time. So at t equals 0, the particle is at a position of negative 3 units from the origin. And then you can see slightly after 2 seconds, the particle has moved to the origin. Then at about 4-ish seconds, it is at 4 meters away. And then it's coming back towards the origin. And then it looks like it's... What's happened over here? Let's get rid of that. And then it looks like it's sort of getting steady here, stuck at negative 1. So this is a position versus time graph. And what I've done on here is I've put... Put a couple more on here. I've put some slopes on this graph. I'm just going to put some numbers down here. This might be a slope of a half. Maybe this is a slope of two. Here we're back to a half. This might have a slope of zero. That looks like a slope of minus one. Maybe here it's about minus two. And then let's put another one in here, about minus one. And there's a slope of zero. What do the slopes in this graph represent? You can tell me what the slopes of this graph are. We know that these lines here represent slopes of the tangent line. We would call that normally dy dx, which means the change in y values with respect to x. In this question, our y value is position and our x value is in time. So these slopes or these derivatives, are representing the change in position, because that's our y-axis, with respect to time. Well, if we're talking about change in position with respect to time, we're, we're measuring how fast is our position changing per second, per minute, whatever our units end up being. So change in position with respect to time is really a measure of velocity. So the change in y with respect to x here is going to give us our velocity. So by definition, velocity then is the rate of change of distance, s, with respect to time. This means that velocity will equal change in s with respect to t, or s prime of t if we like to use that notation. So in other words, velocity is the slope of the tangent line to a position time curve. Then velocity is what we call a vector. A vector has both a magnitude and a direction. So we can say then if the velocity is positive, then this particle will be moving to the right. And if the velocity is negative, then the particle is moving to the left. And I think you can see that. Here we have some positive slopes. Our particle is moving to the right or from the negative direction to the positive direction. Here we have some negative slopes. Velocity is negative. Our particle is moving to the left or towards the negative end of our position scale. Speed is a term that represents how fast the object is moving without regards to its direction. We call this measurement a scalar movement, scalar measurement, because it's always non-negative. So if, if my velocity is minus 7 meters per second, that's telling me I'm moving to the left, 7 meters per second. My speed is simply 7 meters per second. That's how fast I'm moving. And we've already talked about velocity, uh, talking about not only the magnitude of the object, but the actual direction as well. Now acceleration. Acceleration is a term that indicates the rate at which the velocity of a particle changes with respect to time. So if acceleration is the change in speed with respect to time, then it makes sense that acceleration would be dv, or the change in velocity with respect to time. Or another way of writing it is v prime of t. That's the derivative of the velocity function. Or the second derivative 
of your position function. So if you have the position time curve and you take the first derivative, that's the slope of the tangent there, then you are finding the velocity. And if you take the derivative of the velocity function, you will get acceleration. So the second derivative of your position time curve will actually be your acceleration. And once again, we can say if the acceleration is positive, then forces are trying to push the particle towards the right. And if the acceleration is negative, then forces are pushing the particle towards the left. To find out whether the particle is actually speeding up or slowing down, we need to also consider the velocity as well. So in order to tell if a particle is speeding up or slowing down, we need to consider both the acceleration and the velocity. And if the sign of the velocity and the acceleration are the same, then the particle would need to be speeding up because the force is in the same direction as the movement. But if the velocity and the acceleration are opposite, then the direction of movement and the force are opposed to one another. That's going to slow your particle down. Let's consider an example here. Example one, the position of a function, the position function of a particle moving on a horizontal x-axis is shown below. And so this is the position here. This would be 0. This is negative 1, negative 2 to the left, positive, so on to the right. And here's as time moves along. And then I put some slopes on here um, to sort of show you what the velocity might be, say, at, at particular places. So question number a, is the particle moving left or right at time 0? So here's t0, here's t0 right here. Is the particle at that particular point moving to the left or moving to the right? Moving to the right, that's correct, because the velocity is positive. This is a positive slope. So the velocity is positive, moving to the right. Now acceleration. Is the acceleration positive or negative at time zero? So to determine whether or not the acceleration is positive or negative at t-naught, if we look at t-naught, velocity is positive. So we, the, the particle is moving to the right. If the acceleration is positive, then because these are both have the same sign, things should be speeding up at t naught. And that's exactly what we see. We go from a speed of 1 to a speed of 3. Therefore, the acceleration at t naught is positive, which answers, of course, part C as well. Is the particle speeding up or slowing down? It's speeding up because the signs are the same. Where is the particle stopped? At what time is the particle stopped? Yeah, right here at T3, we can see we have a velocity of 0. Stopped. And at T5, is our particle speeding up or slowing down? Appears to be slowing down. Here we have a speed of negative 4. Now it's negative 2, negative 1, negative 1 half. So definitely slowing down at T5. In our second example, instead of the graph, we have a position time function. And we want to analyze the motion of the particle. So we want to find out where is this thing stopped? Where is it moving right? Where is it moving left? Where is it speeding up? And where is it slowing down? So how are we going to find out where this thing is stopped? That's not going to work. The, the, particle, the particle will be stopped if what? The velocity is 0. How do we get the velocity function from the position function? Take the derivative, that's right. Because the velocity function will equal the derivative of the position function, which is 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. And so if we want to set this equal to 0 to find out where the velocity is 0, 
we, I'm going to actually divide by 3 here first. And we get a nice easy one to factor. So we've answered the first part. This thing is stopped at time t equals 1 and t equals 3. And let's, why don't we say that uh, t is measured in seconds here. Okay, so it stopped at t equals 1 or 3 seconds. How can we find out where the particle is moving to the right? Where is the derivative positive? And how can we tell where it's moving left? Where the derivative or the velocity is negative. So what we're going to do is we're going to do these at the same time. And um, there's t0. Okay, so here's the start of time. Here's where it's stopped, where the velocity is 0. Here's where it's stopped, the velocity is 0. So we're just going to determine whether or not the velocity is positive or negative in each of these three regions. Let's test region 1. Well, let's do it over here. Let's pick a point. Let's uh, try x equals, or sorry, t equals a half. So v of t, or v of a half would be, where's our velocity function? Right here. I'm going to dump it into here. 0, or sorry, 0.5 minus 3, this would be a negative term. 0.5 minus 1 would be a negative term. A negative times a negative is a positive. So V of velocity at 0 0.5 is greater than 0, positive. Try region 2. Try 2. 2 is in region 2. Dumping that into here. Negative, positive. Velocity in this region is negative. And testing region 3. Let's try t equals 5. Putting 5 into here. Positive, positive. We are greater than 0. So we can answer these next two. We can say it is moving right where the velocity is positive. So between 1 and 0. And again, greater than 3. And similarly, it will be moving left, this time on the negative interval, which is from 1 to 3. So now we need to look at whether it's speeding, where it's speeding up and it's slowing down. So that's where we need to analyze the acceleration. So we're going to need the acceleration function. And the acceleration function will be the derivative of the velocity function. And the derivative of the velocity function is 2t minus 4. And setting that equal to 0, we get t equals 2. So at 2 seconds, the acceleration is 0. So let's find out again what's happening to our acceleration. And if we test a point in region 1, say 1, when we substitute it into the acceleration function, we can clearly see that this will be negative. And when we substitute a number greater than 2 into our function here, we can see that that will produce acceleration values that are positive. So between 0 and 2 seconds, our acceleration is to the left. Greater than 2 seconds, our acceleration is pushing the particle to the right. The thing to do here to easily find out uh, what's going on is to actually plot both of them on a number line. So here's 0, where we start. Here's 1. Here's 2. Here's 3. So the acceleration is negative from 0 to 2, and then it becomes positive Okay, according to this little picture here, when time is greater than 2, and the velocity was positive to 1, negative till 2, oh, sorry, negative till 3. And then positive after 3. So where is our function speeding up? It will be speeding up 
where the velocity and the acceleration have the same sign. So I'm looking at this block right here. Please excuse the interruption, Mr. Kennedy. Could you please contact local 2100? Mr. Kennedy, please call okay, so 2100. Okay, so between 1 and 2 seconds and more than 3 seconds, we can see that the signs of the velocity and the acceleration are in the same direction. So we would say the particle is speeding up between 1 and 2 seconds and again if it's greater than 3 seconds. Speeding up greater than 3. When the acceleration and the velocity are in the same direction, positive, then our function is speeding up. Same thing if they're both negative, then that's speeding up but in towards the left. Okay, so where the acceleration and the velocity have the exact same signs, that's a speeding up interval. And where is it slowing down? It'll be slowing down when the particles are in, when the velocity and the acceleration are opposite. So between 0 and 1 second, it's slowing down, and then it also is slowing down between 2 and 3 seconds. Okay, so another way we can sort of draw this is we know that it was, um, where's our data here? We know that it's moving right from 0 to 1 second. So from 0 to 1 seconds, it moves to the right. Here's 1 second. Then it moves to the left between 1 and 3 seconds. So here's 3 seconds. And then it turns around and it moves right again, moving right greater than, for time greater than 3 seconds. Okay, so our particle is moving right. At 1 second it stops, it moves left till 3 seconds, then it stops and then it moves right. And at 2 seconds, right here, so this is our, let's do this in, um, let's do this in black. So it is slowing down from 0 to 1 second. So this is a slowing down area. Then it is speeding up until this point right here. This is t equals 2. Then the force starts to push it right, so it slows down. Finally stops it again at 3 seconds. And now it's starting to speed up again as it moves off towards the right. So derivatives can very quickly find velocity when you take the first derivative and acceleration when you take the second derivative of a position time function. And uh, very useful for lots of physics applications.